discover the secrets of traditional case making in this final course in the series, showing you how to make a beautiful mini doctor's bag. The Blackwell Doctor's Bag is a unique mini case that works perfectly as a luxury handbag or even a travel kit. With its robust design, it will keep its elegance for generations to come. However, making a framed bag can be confusing and intimidating for those wanting to try framed bags for the first time. But it needn't be with the right guidance, as I take you through the process and increase your confidence. For more information, head to leathercraftmasterclass.com or hit the link in bio. Hi, my name is Philip and this is the Leathercraft Masterclass. Hello and welcome to the Leathercraft Masterclass with me, Phil, and in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through a new product that's just come out in the Leathercraft Masterclass courses, and that is this mini doctor's bag. So the new course is how to make a mini doctor's bag. And this is the end product of that course. And this is the Blackwell doctor's bag as it's called, which is a name that I've given it. And I'll explain a little bit more about that and the history behind it in a moment. But this course is taking a traditional familiar design from a doctor's bag, which is a top frame case and then shrinking it down and adjusting it to give it more of a curved feminine aesthetic, as you can see, to create a handbag, but still using those traditional designs, concepts, techniques, and skills that would be on the full size version, but bringing it into something that's a little bit more applicable to today and a bit more practical for today as well. On the sides, you'll see it also has a strap attachment and there will be a course coming very, very shortly which is going to be on YouTube as well. So it's gonna be a free course on how to make a shoulder strap and also a small key holder or clochette. So that course will be soon. So don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on your notifications so you'll be one of the first people to be notified when that free course comes out. So onto the bag itself. Now there's been several courses that have led up to this. There's been a course on handle making, how to make a post handle. Also how to make a frame, which is the internal core or steel component of this bag. But also there's been a course on how to install locks and also how to use rivets or how to install rivets, which install the locks. The last course is bringing all those elements together to create this piece, this bag here. So if I open up the bag, pressing the little button down, you'll see it pops open. And then we have a tab here and we can open out the bag. So as you can see there, you have a rather large top to the case. It's a larger mouth, which means it stays open and you can put a surprising amount in there for something that looks very deceivingly small. On the inside also, you'll see we have a gusseted pocket. So this is a pocket which expands on the side. So as you put more things into it, it will expand. So it's not something that will pull against the lining necessarily but it allows you to store more things in there. And you can still store a large phone in here. You can put in your wallet, your keys, essential items. So there's a lot that can be put into here. Now I've named this bag the Blackwell mini case or the Blackwell doctor's bag after Elizabeth Blackwell, which was the first female doctor. And I thought it would be fitting because obviously it's a doctor's bag, but it also has more curves to it, which gives it an altogether more feminine aesthetic. It doesn't mean that guys can't use it as well. If you want to carry a handbag, that's up to you. I can't get away with it. I wish I could sometimes, but it doesn't really look good on me. But the way I would use this is probably remove the handle or don't include the handle. Don't necessarily need to include the strap attachments and use this as a toiletry bag or a kit bag or a dop kit as it's sometimes called because it's something that you can put all your essential toiletries in and then put inside a larger case when you go on vacation, when you go on holiday, if you go traveling, for example. Because of the design, because of the construction and the reinforcements and also a steel frame, it's very, very durable, very, very hard wearing, which means it's gonna be very resistant to crushing. So although it's uh, a nice silhouette and it's great for a handbag it is actually overbuilt for a handbag very very strong very very tough 
This isn't the kind of bag that you're going to crush if you accidentally sit on it. So uh, something, uh, something that's definitely beneficial to this. Now this design, obviously everything's stitched into the base and on the inside, I've actually added something that was very, very traditional many, many years ago, which was to add newspaper as a reinforcement. I haven't used it uh, in the entirety of the bag, it's something very different, but just in the base, I've added a piece of newspaper or newspaper cutting uh, from World War II, which I thought was rather nice. It was a piece of newspaper that actually came out the handle of an evacuee case or a child's evacuee case. So when I restored a particular bag, I had to replace the handle and the old handle used rolled up newspaper in the top of it so that it gives it that shape, that filler. And so I've rolled it out and I've added it on the inside and it has a rather nice message on there uh, from World War II, which I thought was quite nice. And it just adds uh, a little something extra to the bag. So there's parts in here that are very, very old. And I think there's something about adding techniques and designs and something even physical uh, from history into this bag, it just elevates it a little bit more and gives it something else. But that's obviously personal choice whether you do that or not. And as well as a little bit of a nod to history, I've also added uh, a little personal message inside, uh, which is something I really like to do on these types of bags, because I like the idea of, of creating leather goods that are gonna last for generations, outlast me. And then one day, many decades from now, and perhaps someone needs to do a lining repair and they have to open it up and replace something. Uh, there's a little message inside, a little bit of me that lives on as well as my craftsmanship, which I think is, important to have a little bit of legacy and if you have that mentality then you tend to create leather goods that are going to last a very long time um, which is a mindset more than anything else so this bag is entirely made on the exterior and the interior of goat skin something that has a small grain to it you can get very highly grained goat skins of course but this has a really nice fine grain and it goes with its diminutive size and on the inside, we're using a much lighter color, which is a, a kind of a lavender or a mauve, and it brings out the kind of purple elements of the plum goatskin, which is on the outside. So it's a much lighter interior. It just gives it a little bit more brightness to something that's overall quite a dark color. So it gives it that little pop of color, but it also kind of complements the exterior color too. As you can see, these gussets are actually shaped with reinforcements, so they're purposely designed, so they fold a particular way. So when we close, you can see here we have that shape that's on the inside. And that is purposefully done, so it molds in a specific way, which is just very, very slightly below the hinge of the frame. So purposeful design there always. And there's also some more interesting elements that I wanted to add. There are parts to it which not only reinforce the edges, but also prevent any warping from the gussets. So the exterior panel is trying to do something different to what the gusset wants to do. So we give more strength to the exterior panel so the gusset folds where the panel tells it to. So that is what you see here, but it also adds a little bit more of a 3D element which plays with the light and the shadows. And down here, what you can see is a hint of more traditional briefcases or top frame cases where you would actually have a patch like this sewn into each side. This was to help reduce wear and tear and they could eventually be replaced if necessary. So that when you bump your bag against something, the parts that wear out first, which are the, usually the corners, uh, have a patch that can be replaced. So I've integrated that patch into the design here and it really kind of gives a little bit more shape which opposes the outside, kind of brings together a really, really nice silhouette, but also gives a nice little nod to history and tradition, uh, which is something that I really enjoyed as well. Other parts that are raised, of course, as you can see here, this is the flap that goes over the top uh, and secures the hasp at the bottom there. Here we see stitching on the side, which is flanked by a raised area in the center. So this is reinforced, it's raised, and the sides are much thinner. That means the stitching here, which is gonna get a little bit more friction from your hand for movement, is actually below the edge and where it's raised. So it doesn't actually get 
any friction or very, very little friction. And it's a very similar story with the outside here. If you try and touch the stitching, it's actually below the surface, so it's below the edge and where it's raised on the side. So this raising area also protects it as well. This you may know as bombaying, which is a, a French word for raised or domed. So this is an Italian lock, which is based on an English design. And this particular size is actually designed more for uh, folio cases or portfolio cases, which is, it look, kind of looks like a laptop, a slim laptop cover, imagine, with a zip at the top that goes down to the side. This was designed to carry documents and papers and things like that around, and it's usually slung under your shoulder. And that zip, the puller itself, would have a little tab or a hasp on there. When you did it up, you then closed it and you could actually lock it because it was designed to carry documents. So just a little added security. But it's the perfect size because it's a briefcase lock that's been shrunk down and it really kind of fits into this. It's one of the smallest locks of its kind and it works really, really well. It's a high quality Italian made lock. And this is what we installed in the locks and riveting course. So if you'd like to discover how to make one of these mini doctor's bags, head over to leathercraftmasterclass.com where you'll see a series of courses. Uh, I believe we're up to almost 60 courses now, but there's a course for the handle, for the frame, for the locks, and also bringing all those components together to create this beautiful bag. And if you're new to the Leathercraft Masterclass, don't forget to enter your email address so I can send you a free tool buyer's guide and also a video about how to select leather, which is vitally important if you want to start in Leathercraft. For those of you who already have a little bit more experience in Leathercraft, this is the kind of course you can do if you already know how to do basic stitching, edge finishing, hand skiving, for example, and accurate cutting of leather from patterns. If that's something you already know how to do, then this is a course that's going to be definitely doable for the majority of people with a little bit of experience. If you don't have any experience, don't worry. There's almost 60 courses right now where we go from how to hand stitch, what glues to use, how to edge finish, whether it's burnishing, edge paint, how to use skiving knives, how to sharpen skiving knives, and all the basic foundational courses that build you up to enable you to create something like this. So if you're looking at this thinking uh, it's going to be too advanced, at the moment it may be, but the idea of the course is, is to build up your skills as if it's a skill toolkit so that you have more tools to use mentally to create items like this or many other projects. So there's all sorts of projects that we have from basic card holders all the way up to attache cases, luggage, handbags, wallets, belts, watch traps, you name it, uh, we've probably got it in there. So whatever level you are at the moment, this is something that you can either take on now or something you can build up to as the weeks go by. Thank you for watching. And if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below and I will see you in the next course. Thank you for watching.